Okay, so I made this little tutorial for you to help you through this process of relating all of the important numbers, protons and neutrons, atomic number and mass number, along with the name of a particular atom. So I'll run you through a few examples and then I'll give you a chance to do that again. Okay, so I, I just made up a couple additional atoms, and this is what you see on the screen. Um, and the symbols, colors, um, all the little pictures and stuff, it doesn't really matter what order they're in. What's important is that you know the connection between all of these numbers, and that's what should be in your notes. So as I go through this, if it's not clear in your notes, you can pause, write it down in your note, then when you go to do this yourself, you'll have those important points in front of you. Okay. So in the first one here, the example that I have, um, I give you the name chlorine 37. All right. The most important thing you need to remember when you see the name is that you should immediately go to the periodic table and find that atom's name, the element name, on that periodic table. This might take you a little bit of time because you're not familiar with everything is, but not always, but usually the first letter or couple letters would be an indication of where you'd find its symbol. The symbol is the, the thing most prominent on the periodic table. So I'm going to try to keep most of the elements that I'll deal with here near the top. So if you look around, we're looking for something that maybe starts with C, and it's not this one or this one. And it turns out it's way over here, chlorine, written kind of small. And what you need to see on the periodic table is the atomic number. It's going to be a whole number, a counting number. And it will be the number that you will see increase by one each time you go over. So, for example, here, aluminum is 13, and then we go over towards chlorine. It's 14, 15, 16, 17. That atomic number identifies what that element is. And it's also important because the atomic number is always the same as the proton number. Okay, so when you go back to your chart, you can right away put this ato atomic number in two different places. You can put it in for the protons as well. So we'll go back here, and we're going to replace this with 17, and we're going to replace this with 17. So those two columns will always be the same. Okay, what else is there to know about this? Well, this particular chlorine has a number 37 after it. It should be in your notes as well that the number that goes along with an atom's name tells you its mass number. Please don't think this is number you get from the periodic table. The mass number is particular to a certain atom, and you cannot get that from the table. So if you remember what the mass of an atom is, it's the protons and the neutrons combined. All the mass is in those two particles. The electrons don't contribute much mass at all. So when you see it here next to the name, you know that that belongs to the mass number column and that this 37 mass number is the sum of the protons plus the neutrons. So in this case, we have to do a little subtraction. You say 17 plus what other number would make a total of 37? And that number is, you can do some subtraction here, 37 minus 17 gives us 20. So that's how we fill in the rest of the lines here on uh, atom number one. Okay, in a similar way on this one here, we are starting now with the protons, but remember what the protons tells us, two important things. Number one, the atomic number is always equal to the number of protons. So we can put that number right in here. And it also links with the name that we give to this particular atom. So if we go back to the periodic table, now instead of having the name, we have the atomic number. It actually makes it a little quicker for you because these are in order. So number 22 is right here. And the name of all of those atoms will begin with titanium. Okay, so we can start writing in the name. Titanium. But remember, we also need to know which particular titanium atom is this. And the number that we put with the word is always the mass number. So this is 40. That was given to you at the beginning. And just like we did last time, you have to know that the protons and neutrons add up to be the mass number. So 22 plus what other number would make 40? Again, doing a little subtraction, you would know it's 18. And finally, 
if we have protons and neutrons, and we can start a couple of different ways here. First, the atomic number will always be the proton number, so we can match that here. And the mass number is the sum of protons and neutrons combined. So we can add those up. Notice this time we're doing addition because we have the two numbers to start with. Whereas on this previous two, we were subtracting the protons from the mass number to get the neutrons. So 37 and 34 adds up to be 71. And for the name, again, we always link the atomic number with the name. So back on the periodic table, we're looking for atomic number 37. Here it is over here. It's called rubidium. And so I'll put that in. And then the number that goes with it is always which particular type of rubidium atom is this? This is the one with a mass of 71. So it's got 37 protons and just 34 neutrons. There are other rubidium atoms that have different numbers of neutrons. Okay. All right. So there's an example of how you fill in the chart. It was maybe a little quick, but you could always go back and replay a little part of it before you get started on one for your own practice. Hope that was helpful for you.